Hi, I'm Karen Israel. I'm a field application scientist with Illumina, and I'm going to be giving you a brief overview of the cluster generation process for Illumina sequencing. This overview will be followed by a presentation by Tim Dismet from the Broad Institute discussing procedures, tips, and tricks that they've used cluster generation process for a high throughput facility and for the, for the everyday user. Cluster generation is the second step in the Illumina sequencing workflow. We've already created library, and now we're going to hybridize it to our flow cell, to surface-bound oligos that are complementary to the adapters we just put on to our library inserts. From there, we'll be able to do the bridge amplification process to create clusters and move that onto the sequence for, or for detection of the, the sequence. Cluster generation turns the Illumina libraries into clonal clusters which are bound to the surface of the flow cell. All library preparation protocols result in double-stranded DNA. And in the cluster generation uh, process, each sample is treated identically. The samples are denatured and hybridized to the flow cell. The captured sample DNA is used as a template for a second strand synthesis to re irreversibly bind the DNA to the sur surface of the flow cell. The second strand can then be amplified into the clonal cluster, and the cluster can then be linearized differentially to um, specifically sequence the for forward or reverse strand uh, of the, the cluster. We also block any unused oligo on the surface of the, the flow cell to prevent any uh, background fluorescence and add on a sequencing primer specific for the read we want to do. The cluster station CBOT delivers fluidics and controls temperature. This is a close-up image of a flow cell for a genome analyzer. You can see eight lanes, eight channels there, each with a, a port on the far right and far left side for uh, fluid to flow through. If you think about it, the flow cell is a little bit like a uh, glass sandwich with channels running through it. The entire surface, it, top surface is glass with the port openings. The bottom surface is solid glass and it has the lane lines in between to um, prevent any cross-contamination between samples. The inside of each lane is coated with gel matrix, which we co uh, cross-linked our unique adapters to that are specific for, that will complement the oligos on your uh, libraries. But in this way, we're able to generate the clusters in a you know, contained environment and um, treat multiple samples at, at once within the confines of the flow cell. The cluster station and CBOT are the two devices we have for cluster generation at Illumina. The CBOT is the latest incantation of the cluster ge generation apparatus, and it vastly simplifies the number of hands-on user steps that the customer has to do in order to generate clusters. Either system contains uh, similar fluidics, uh, similar thermal station to regulate temperature, and similar um, housing to hold your, your DNA, DNA libraries and put your specific DNA and primers onto the, onto the instrumentation. Um, in the image at the bottom, you can see the DNA libraries in each strip tubes um, on the left-hand side of the image in the blue holder being aspirated um, through a manifold where the flow cell is clamped into place on top of our thermal station and um, will be hybridizing the, the DNA to the flow cell in the start of the cluster process. Throughout the process, we're going to start by um, having one copy of your, your library hybridized to, to the, or one fragment of the DNA hybridized to the library and we'll turn it into a, a, a thousand, um, we'll amplify it into a thousand fragments by the end of the process. The cluster ge generation workflow is, is pretty simple. Uh, it starts by preparation of the cluster reagent. You would open our software to run the cluster generation recipe. Slight differences for paired end and single reads, but basically, you know, very similar. We load the recipe and put the flow cell on and just follow the recipe prompts to prime the system and load the reagents. We'll go through the, gen the cluster generation steps of uh, template hybridization, uh, amplification, linearization, blocking, and primer hybridization, which will prepare uh, our flow cell for sequencing on uh, the genome analyzer. The CBOT process is very similar, uh, except that due to some of the simplified fluidics and user uh, hands-on user steps in there, the processing time is, is reduced and is much uh, more user-friendly. 
Now I'd like to talk about the cluster generation process in detail. Uh, I'm going to go over the V4 chemistry using our paired end, uh, the example of a paired end library. We start off with the paired end flow cell, uh, and I've got a visual here of the sur surface of that flow cell showing the P7 and P5 surface bound oligos. We need the alumina hide manifold, which will allow us to take material from strip tubes and transfer it into, uh, into the flow cell. The strip tubes containing our, um, our samples of interest and some of the, the buffers. And our hide buffer, which is just a basic salt storage buffer uh, that, the, that the flow cell is, um, that we'll use to prime the flow cell for the addition of uh, residual read, of uh, additional reagents. Once we've pre-washed the flow cell with the hive buffer, we're able to add our denatured library. We ramp the temperature from 96 degrees down to 40 degrees to allow all of the uh, denatured library fragments to find a complement on the surface of the flow cell. Um, and then once we've allowed that uh, hybridization time, we'll wash away any unbound library using our wash buffer HT2. At that point, we flow in amplification premix, which is a good buffer for our, our um, various polymerases to work in. So the amp premix is flowed through, followed by fusion enzyme. And this will copy the template strand to, to the flow cell. So you can see in the image above, we now have the double-stranded copy. We ramped immediately to 20 degrees to eliminate any exonuclease activity of the fusion enzyme. It is a high fidelity enzyme, and we don't want any you know, uh, exonuclease activity to, to take place. So we immediately follow that with a sodium hydroxide wash to denature any of the residual fusion that might be left and rinse the sodium hydroxide away with wash buffer. At this point, we've got our nice template irreversibly bound to the surface of the flow cell. In order to go from the single copy of your library into a multi-copy cluster, we need to employ some sort of amplification. Illumina uses an isothermal amplification method called bridge amplification to um, turn the single molecule into multiple copies. This whole process is done at 60 degrees, and we're able to nature, denature, anneal, and extend using a, a variety of chemicals uh, by flowing chemistry through the flow cell. The first reagent we flow through is formamide, and this will denature any double-stranded material. We then flow through amplification premix, which is just a buffered solution that's good for all sorts of different enzymes to, to work in and helps to rinse away any residual um, formamide that's left in the, the flow cell. We follow this with our amplification mix, which is the same as the amplification premix, but contains BST polymerase and nucleotides. And this will um, cause the extension and copy of that initial fragment. From there, we can flow formamide in again and denature. Now you see we have two copies of the, of the initial template. We follow that with another cycle of the amplification premix and follow that with another cycle of the AMP mix with the BST polymerase and nucleotides to make another copy. And we do this process called bridge amplification over and over for a total of 35 cycles, which creates a cluster molecule that has a 1,000 copies of the, the, the template all uh, within a proximity of each other. When we finish up, we'll wash with our wash buffer and uh, store the flow cell in high buffer um, until the user has time to come over and um, take the flow cell off or continue on into the linearization pro uh, blocking and hive process. Linearization blocking and sequencing primer hive are the final steps of preparation for a flow cell before sequencing. In this process, we go from a double-stranded uh, amplified cluster to single-stranded uh, with sequencing primer attached, ready for uh, sequencing on the genome analyzer. We use the amplification manifold that was previously filled with high buffer, or we start with high buffer at the beginning of the process, temperature of 20 degrees. We flow in the linearization mix. In the case of the paired in chemistry, this is LMX1, which will cleave the P5 um, oligo on the flow cell. We ramp the temperature to 37, almost 38 degrees for 30 minutes to um, cause that linearization. And then we'll cool back down to 20 degrees and, and wash away any residual linear, linearization mix. From there, we add our blocking mix to terminate the ends of any um, 
single stranded uh, oligo that hasn't been used on the surface of the flow cell, so it doesn't create any black background fluorescence during sequencing. We don't want those ends to extend in a fluorescent base and create that background. So the blocking mix goes in at 38 degrees for 30 minutes and then 60 degrees for 15 minutes to block uh, all the uh, the ends in the uh, unused ends in the flow cell. And we'll wash with HT2 and HT1 to finish the blocking process. After blocking, we anneal the sequencing primer and ready the flow cell for sequencing. We do this by denaturing off the um, a cut strand using sodium hydroxide and annealing the sequencing primer for 60 degrees at 5 minutes. Uh, after this, we wash the flow cell and it's ready for sequencing on the genome analyzer. I just wanted to take a minute and talk about the read to turnaround chemistry we use to regenerate the clusters, uh, regenerate that second strand for the read to on the genome analyzer. So this process is very similar to what's already gone on earlier in cluster uh, generation, only we're doing it on the sequencer and we want to cut the P7 strand, leave the P5 strand intact for sequencing. So at the end of read one, you're looking at a contract that looks like this, where you've got your sequencing primer on, you've extended and done your, your first read. Now we want to unblock, free up all those, those ends that we brought, blocked previously. So we denature and uh, deprotect those ends. We are able to resynthesize the P5 strand, so your fragment is able to, to come back and, and hybridize to the remaining portion of that P5 um, oligo on the surface of the flow cell, uh, there's enough intact to um, redo the bridge amplification. From there, we will linearize the P7 linearization using LMX2 in this case to free up the opposite strands. Do the same blocking as we did for the read 1 and denature and hybridize the read 2 sequencing primer. From there, we'll just do our second sequencing read and uh, that's the end of the, the paradigm sequencing process. So Illumina's best practices and recommendations for cluster generation are to store our, re our reagents as recommended, no, subject them to multiple freeze thaws, um, observe the nine-month shelf life from the date of manufacture, and to track lot numbers and barcodes as a good practice. Prepare all reagents fresh before use, being careful with the dilutions of sodium hydroxide that are used in, in the cluster generation process. Use the proper recipes and remove any unnecessary recipes. Um, we do version our kits very often, and oftentimes the older chemistry isn't compatible with the new recipes or uh, vice versa. It might cause adverse effects, so make sure you've got the proper revisions. Check your fluidics delivery both visually and by weight of reagents delivered. At the start of the process, it's more of a visual thing to make sure all the lines prime, all of the reagents flow properly to start. So when you walk away, you know that um, your, your amplification is going to be taking place properly. And the final weights in the end or uh, measurements on the tube can really help you track um, if the right amount flowed or if there have been any, been any clogs in the lines. And to ensure the cluster station is washed regularly, we would actually recommend a weekly decon of the system if possible. It really helps to uh, remove any residual salts that are in the line. And with that, I'll turn it over to Tim Dismet from the Broad Institute to talk about the uh, cluster generation process as it applies to their hive throughput facility and a lot of nice tips and tricks they've used to ensure, um, ensure good results.